Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Ohm Infra Limited Q3 and 9 month FY24 earnings conference call. As a reminder, all participant clients will be in the listen only mode. There will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during this conference, please signal an operator by pressing star and then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Vishal Mehta. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I, on behalf of Stellar Investor Relations, welcome you all to OM Infra Q3 and 9M FY24 earning conference call. We shall be sharing key operating and financial highlight for the third quarter and nine months ended December 31, 2023. We have with us today the senior management team of OM Infra Limited, Mr. Vikas Kothari, Managing Director and CEO, and Mr. Sunil Kumar Jain, Chief Financial Officer. Before we begin, I would like to state that some of the statements made in today's discussion may be forward-looking in nature and may involve risk and uncertainties. Documents relating to the company's financial performance, including the investor presentation, have already been uh, uploaded on the website of the stock exchanges. I now invite Mr. Vikas Kothari to share his initial remarks on the company's performance for the quarter and nine months. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Vishal. Uh, and good evening, everyone. Uh, and welcome to our company's Q3 uh, nine-month FI24 earnings call. Hope you all have been able to go through our investor presentation for Q3 uh, and nine-month FI24. As we have been apprising you on our previous calls, our execution run rate has been improving consistently. In the nine-month ended, December 31, 2023, we are happy to report that our revenues of uh, 818 crores, which is the highest ever in the history of our company, and is up by almost 81% year on year, and is significant achievement considering our full year FI23 revenues of 799 crores. Profitability for the operating and net margins has also improved during nine months period. In nine months, FI24 our EBITDA margin compared in about 7.8 percent and net profit margin at about 5.3 percent. In Q3 FI 24 2, the execution run rate remained robust across engineering segment and uh, pickup in sales witnessed in real estate segment 2, leading to overall revenue growth. Engineering business profitability maintained with EBIT margins at about 11 percent in Q3 FI 24. However, overall EBITDA margins was impacted due to timing mismatch in revenue and expense booking in execution of some of our projects. Our outstanding order book remains healthy at about 2,500 crores, uh, which translates to about uh, three times of our FI23 revenues and provides a good revenue visibility for the next two, three years. The order book is well diversified with a good mix of hydro and water projects and gel rejuvenation projects and pump storage. <coughs> uh, some storage project also. Hydro and water projects are typically irrigation, dam, construction of dam, uh, hydromechanical equipment, and are executed over the next uh, three to four years and give us a good uh, EBITDA margin of, of about uh, 18%. Revenues for these projects are recorded on a project completion basis. On the other hand, gel mission projects have two major components. Uh, the, which includes uh, pipe procurement and laying and other EPC-related works uh, related to civil structures like overhead tanks, pump houses, CWR, RWR, etc., etc. These projects are to be executed over a period of two to, two to three years with a healthy, healthy EBITDA margin of about 12%. However, the nature of these projects requires us to upfront some of the expenses while uh, book revenues upon completion of the section of the milestones, causing some volatility in our quarterly numbers, including gross margins. Our current outstanding order book of JGM projects is 1,490 crores, out of which 750 crores is from UP and 740 crores is from Rajasthan. Once executed, our track record will be enhanced, and these projects will open the doors for other similar projects 
with central government as well as with state governments. These two projects, once completed, will give us an incredible pre-qualification for future projects in order to qualify independently for much larger projects uh, over the next one, two decades. We recognize substantial potential in India's hydro and water sector, particularly in hydropower and water supply projects and river interlinking projects also, which are coming up now. Leveraging our expertise, we are well positioned to secure a significant market share, especially in hydromechanical equipment, and also generate steady revenue through the next five to 10 years uh, through operation and maintenance of uh, the projects that we are undertaking. The growth prospects are further enhanced by the emergence of pump storage projects, river interlinking projects, Jal Jeevan Mission projects, providing exciting avenues for expansion in our focus on hydroelectric power generation and water infrastructure verticals. Lastly, let me now give you some updates on key litigations that our companies was involved in and the progress that we have achieved in those litigations. As we had updated you in NTPC Tapon Vishnugad Hydroelectric Power Project, we, uh, we had won an arbitration award which was challenged by NTPC in High Court. The amount was fully deposited by NTPC in the High Court under protest. We are happy to report that NTPC has paid us uh, around 65% of the total claim amount, uh, which is for, uh, an amount of 46 crores under the Vivar Vishwa scheme in December 2023. Uh, development in Bilwara Chaputol Road project uh, was that arbitration award was already uh, with us. The PWD had deposited 10% of the arbitration award amount uh, before challenging the award. The appeal made by the PWD, Government of Rajasthan, has been dismissed by the Commercial Court. And hence, the arbitration award has been uh, reinstated. Uh, the PWD government of Rajasthan has now uh, it has now option of appealing against the decision of the commercial court in the high court of Rajasthan, and more specifically in the double bench, because of the uh, current uh, rules of the Arbitration Act. With respect to Mahada uh, Bandra project in Mumbai, uh, because of various reasons, we had uh, the consortium had appealed to the arbitration forum against Mahada. And the matter was finally heard with an award uh, with a, partially in our favor with FSI enhancements and, uh, you know, a couple of other reliefs which were granted to us and some reliefs which were not granted to us, uh, subject to payment of additional rates, additional applicable rates on the FSI, enhanced FSI. The operationalization of the award is subject to further legal proceedings by MHADA and also uh, we have ourselves appealed against the arbitration award, seeking some additional relief from the uh, legal process. Before I request our CFO, Mr. Eskijan, to delve into the details of our quarterly performance, I would like to reiterate that over the past few years, we have continued to build on our strengths and have increased the scale of operations of our company. With a large order book at our hand and our demonstrated track record and leading position in hydro and water infrastructure, we believe that we are well-placed to capitalize on the opportunities in this space and post strong growth in coming quarters. I now request Mr. Eskijan to take, take us through uh, the financial performance. Over to you, Mr. Jain. Thank you, Vikarji. Well, the overall performance has been discussed. Let me take you through some key highlights of this quarter. Execution momentum continued across both engineering and real estate segments with revenue growth of 24% year on year to rupees 245 crore and 140% year on year to rupees 10 crore, respectively to quarter, quarter feet 24. In Q324, unbilled revenue has been considered for those items whose billing will be done in one month after the end of quarter, unlike the previous uh, policy. High other income on account of receipt of arbitration award under the scheme has been accounted for. As we have been highlighting, we have focused on utilizing our first cash flow to reduce debt. Our non-current liability has reduced from Rs. 96 crore in March 21 to 62 crore in September 23. We will continue to carefully use our free cash flow to strengthen our balance sheet. Thank you very much. Over to you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. 
Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchtone telephone. If you wish to withdraw yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Hello. Do we have uh, any questions? Yes. Yes. You have the first question from the line of Kaushal Kedia from Walford. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi. My question is for the CFO. Can you please explain as to why uh, what mismatch is there in the revenue booking and in the expensing out in this quarter? Yeah. Unlike uh, previous uh, uh, quarters, we used to book bill unbilled revenue. The work which we completed in suppose in quarter end, and the billing has not been done. So we used to build as unbilled revenue as per banking guideline and as per our internal policies. But from the GST perspective, we cannot book the, uh, the revenue if the billing is not done in 15 days or 30 days. In, in December quarter, we have booked only those revenue. For the billing of those, will be booked certainly in one month. So those, those gaps have uh, caused some some. Uh, Revenue booking, uh, less, lesser revenue booking. How much? How much is that amount? Twenty-five so crores. How much is? Twenty-five crores approximately. So, for so my understanding, so this twenty-five crores is the work is done, and it's 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 uh, the, just the billing and the has to be done. The billing has to be raised and recognized as revenue. Yeah, but the billing will not bill, billing will not certainly be done in January. So we have not booked the as unbilled revenue in, the, in the, that, that quarter. Okay, but the work that we've done for this has come as as expense, as I'm yeah. assuming changes in finished goods. Yes, yes, yes. Unbuilt unbuilt revenue we can book at the profit, and and finished goods we have to build build only at cost. No, can you can you repeat that please? Unbuilt revenue we can book at profit also, uh, which we which we have to build to the government, and finished goods we have to build only at stock, only at cost. Only at cost. So basically, unbuilt revenue is to the tune of 25 crores. Unbuilt revenue is 25 crores, which we have to bill bill to the government in uh, January. But we were not certain it will be done in January, so we have not booked as unbuilt revenue. Okay, so we are not recognizing the revenue, but we have incurred expenses pertaining to that revenue. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, and so one more question. So in the notes to accounts, it says that uh, we sold some land for 16 crores. So that is showing that that, that, that land is uh, in our SPV in Gujarat silo, where we have sold the land, and the, and the amount is uh, lying in that that company only. In that company, in SPV only, yes, yes. Okay, okay. And this this in the same notes to accounts is 25.93 crores of advances that the company has given to the subsidiary that is showing the advances in the books of the company. Yeah. That that is lying as of now to Bilwara to sorry Gujarat and Bihar silo. Out of that 25 crore rupees, 16 crore has already been realized in those companies, which will be paid to main company in some time. Okay, so the other income which is at 19 crores, it pertains to the Vivaat Se Vishwas scheme amount that we have received. Yes, yes, yes. We have received some uh, 40 odd crore rupees in Vivaat Se Vishwas, and in this 40 crore rupees, some 19 odd crore rupees is towards interesting. Towards interest. Okay. So that's the reason that the, the Vivaat Vishwas receipt will not be classified as other income. That is my next question. Only only interest income we have uh, classified as other income. Main supply income has been classified as the main 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 income. Main main turnover. Okay. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Janesh Shah, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Good evening, Vikas Ji and team. Uh, my question is specifically related to the Palacia project. 
Can you please elaborate how many units we have sold in this quarter and what are the balance unit which we are planning to sell further? Jensab, can you take that question? We have uh, produced a presentation on the Palisha project and we have almost sold 60% of the units in uh, up to December 23. And uh, some, some uh, 150, out of 150 units, 3,47,000 has already been sold and 2,96,000 will remain to be sold, which will save a revenue of almost 300 rupees. But against the sold units, we have already realized 313 crore rupees and some amount is already is set to be realized. Overall, in the next uh, two to three years, uh, some 370 crore we can realize out of cash flow. So why this realization is getting delayed? Because as I understand, the project is completed, the OC is received. If the units are sold and the agreement is done with the buyer, why the realization is getting delayed? People are not getting the, their units uh, registered in their name because of stamp duty. And there is no any law which can prohibit, prohibit them to have stamp duty to payment or booking or registry. So people are just waiting for that. And and uh, 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 what kind of total revenue we are expecting from Palacia by this year end, by this financial year end? So, so roughly 35 to 40 crores. Okay. Okay. Uh, the next, uh, the second is a question I have for Vikasji. Vikasji, we have been talking a lot about pump hydro projects and another. And in the last call also, the company was expecting to grab quite a few projects in this segment. Can you please elaborate how many projects we have bid so far and what are the expected order book in this line? See, as of now, we already have uh, 150 crore project going on in the pump storage uh, project, which is already, which is the uh, Kunda pump storage project in Tamil Nadu. Uh, this is our first project in uh, pump storage, uh, hydro pump storage project. Uh, likewise, we are expecting, I mean, the government of India has uh, drawn a potential of adding another 25,000 megawatts to pump storage project. So, uh, certainly, you know, uh, it takes a little time for these projects to to, it takes a little time for these projects to come up for bidding, but uh, uh, because first the DPR, are ma DPR is made, DPR is approved, financial closure is done, CCA is from for government sector, CCA clearances are done, uh, you know, all those things, once they are tied up, then the bidding starts. So the bidding process itself is a little slow, but uh, certainly since this, being, this is being driven by the PMO, uh, therefore there will be no dearth of equity funding, for the, especially for the uh, central and the state government projects, and uh, certainly these projects will come up for bidding. My sense is that in the next six to twelve months, um, some of these projects will come up for bidding. Okay. And our share in that uh, will be, you know, of course, either limited to hydro mechanical equipment, which will be roughly around five percent of the total cost of the project, or if we do civil and hydro mechanical, then it will be much larger. But that will depend on project to project, how much we want to take and what parts, what part of the project we want to bid for. Understood. You have explained about the Bandra Mahada where you are going to challenge the verdict. But this project of Bandra Slum Rehabilitation is pending since many, many years. And what I understand based on the recent development, the Maharashtra government has already granted FSI, which is increased from 2.5 to 4. So is this 4 FSI is applicable for our project? And uh, what is the time duration you are thinking when this matter will be closed with Maharashtra government? See, uh, the project is a slum rehabilitation project, and therefore it's very complicated. It takes time. Uh, but the good thing that has happened is when we took over the project, the FSI, saleable FSI was close to about half a million square feet. And today we are talking about almost 3 million square feet. Uh, so the FSI has increased, uh, but uh, uh, my sense is that unless the plot is cleared, uh, you know, uh, the monetization of this may, may take longer than usual. So we have signed up the uh, Joint Development Agreement with DB Realty, and uh, hopefully in the next six to twelve months, uh, the plot should be uh, should be uh, cleared of slum. And uh, once that happens, then the monetization of this project will also start. My sense is 6 to 12 months. Okay. 
Thank you, Vikasji. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Tejas Shah from Laser Securities. Please go ahead. Hey, uh, regarding that uh, Jaipur, uh, how many units have been sold and how many units are pending? Approximately 90 units have been sold. 90? Five. And 57 to 50 units are and out of 95, how many are booked? Or you can, I think last thing what you said is that unless and until the place is registered, you are not booking that in the revenue. Yeah. So out the of value, 95, how the many are registered the, and how many are The value of the, the, value of the is roughly 313 crores. And out of this, we have only booked approximately 140 crores rupees. Okay. So, uh, if I see second and revenue now, I think uh, we were showing loss in the the thing, uh, on the real estate. Why is that? Because because we have to uh, entire expenses which is going on towards interior and towards uh, value addition that is going straight away into the profit and loss account. Earlier it was capitalized when the project was not complete. Now it's going straight into the profit and loss account. Suppose. We are incurring 10 crore rupees and the ratio of only 8 crore rupees is done. So 2 crore will be shown as loss. But this loss is just on, it's a book book loss, not a, not a real loss. Okay, so if you can share a poor life, so what is the normal profit and loss
Mahada was not able to provide us those condition precedents, and uh, because of which we went into arbitration. And then arbitrator has given us an, uh, an award, but that award is still not uh, covering all the relief that we have sought from the arbitrator in our appeal, and therefore we have appealed against the award also. So, so matter is uh, sub judice as, uh, as we speak today. We did get some relief. For example, you know, the land that Mada was supposed to give us as per our original agreement was 26,000 square meters, uh, 30,000 square meters. But what they gave us was only 26,000 square meters. So the arbitrator has given a judgment that, no, you have to give them 30,000 square meters. So, you know, things like this are, uh, are what will need uh, some intervention by Mada and SRA. So that, that is, if, if, that is to answer your question. How much time again this is going to take to get do that? Rejoin there and again, we, we are feeling water. My sense is next 6 to 12 months. And simultaneously, there are a lot of works which are happening simultaneously also, right? So on the ground, uh, we are also constructing those uh, reha uh, temporary transit tenements. Uh, we are upgrading the existing tenements which are built there. So all those things are parallelly get going on. While parallelly, this arbitration and this uh, legal process is also going on. Simultaneously. What is the ballpark? Uh, when I you that we can generate approximately from the See, revenue will all depend space. on uh, revenue will all depend on what we intend to do once the plots are cleared. If the plots are cleared of all the slum and and it becomes a clean uh, uh, you know piece of land, then we may decide to either develop it. Uh, I mean, the DB may decide to either develop it themselves, or DB may decide to sell it outright. Or DB may decide to bring in a partner, uh, which brings in a brand uh, at that stage. But that discussion doesn't make any sense to do now. That discussion makes sense to do only once uh, the plot is cleared. We still have to wait for a year at least, looking yes. at all the conditions. Correct, correct, correct. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Darshil Javeri from Crown Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, uh, hi. Uh, thank you so much for taking my question. Hope I'm audible, sir. Sir, you are yes. audible. You may proceed. Yeah, yeah. Hi. Uh, so just uh, wanted to ask, uh, we have, uh, I'm sorry, I joined the call a bit late. Maybe my questions are a bit uh, So we had a spike in other expenses this time, right? So. Uh, 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 could you just, you know, why have, why have our margins dropped a bit? Like, could you just explain because we had significantly different margins in Q2 and Q3? Now, the work which has been completed, and again, those, uh, the billing has not been done, that is showing as an expenses in the books of account. And the billing will be done for when? Due to elections in Rajasthan, the billing was not done. The billing will be done probably uh, in March or April. Due to elections, for two or three months, we could not do any billing because there was no, there was no comment from this, that, those two projects. Okay, 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 sir. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, sir, just another question. Uh, any kind of guidance would you give for, you know, FY25 revenue and margin? What can we expect? Any projects that are coming to fruition, you know, which will, you know, Increase our revenue somehow. Yeah. March, March 25, we are hopefully targeting uh, everything goes good, uh, 1200 crores base as a revenue, and 10% uh, as straight uh, to 10% as net profit. Oh, uh, net profit. Oh, okay. So uh, that relates to you, sir. Uh, as well as, uh, I just wanted to ask, like, in terms of our order book and execution, like just from understanding the company, as you know, some projects, you know, will take three to four years. So, ours, most of the projects, like if you see our life cycle of the project, it does even at hydro, we would be at the starting, middle or towards the end of the life, in case, you know, majority of the projects. Uh, we have right now projects in all the stages. Some are at early stage, some are at middle stage, some are at late stage, like... Like Manipur is at the early stage, and Shapur Khandi and Nishardha is at middle stage, and Daljivan is also at middle stage. Okay, okay. 95% of our order book, rather, only 40, 50 crores of out of 2,500 crores 
is in early stage otherwise everything else is in middle stage oh okay 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 so the, i just say i wanted to ask this question because maybe in the next one or two years we could see accelerated revenue as well as uh, higher profit because a lot of expenses would have been already booked would that be a fair assumption sir Yeah, yes, yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. Okay, okay, perfect, perfect, sir. I just wanted to ask, like, with the election, does that, you know, hamper our business somehow, you know, orders or, you know, uh, cash that's being released from the government yeah, as lower? Definitely. Any kind definitely of election. Election does have an impact because what happens is a lot of uh, new tendering and new projects get frozen uh, because of elections, both state as well as central government elections. So some of the states uh, were affected because of state elections, and some of the states were affected because of central. Uh, are now, I mean, so, so some, most of the rather uh, all state and states are affected by the central government elections. So all the tendering which should have happened uh, by now uh, is actually gotten deferred and is getting postponed. So there's a lag uh, uh, in that, and plus in terms of the execution of the existing projects and existing order book, that also has an impact. uh to some extent because uh, you know the, the, the during the election times uh, funding for all of these capital intensive projects uh, closed down a little okay so so would it be fair to know maybe q1 might be slightly muted quarter but then q2 onwards after the election things will pick up more like would that be a fair assumption sir and in the reverse way this q4 the higher activity of execution because government would want to complete a lot of projects before election so some of the states where uh, which have just completed elections will go in the full throttle mode uh, now uh, so so definitely there will be pick up in those states and uh, uh, but the new project tendering will certainly slow down uh, because of the central government elections okay 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 uh got it and just the last final question sir do you see any kind of risk you know that can be a speed bump you know that we could face right now just like from a macro or micro any perspective that you see any risk on what this in general sir a micro risk or macro risk you know that can impact our company sir no not in our infrastructure business i mean infrastructure uh especially related to water irrigation dams uh, uh you know i don't see any macro or ma- micro uh, challenges because uh, you know the focus is from the central government and central government focus kind of uh you know enhances the uh, the funding uh, uh, of even if even if it's of state projects so for example you may have, you may have heard of eastern rajasthan canal project uh, which is uh, which is being which is very soon maybe in the next six months going to be sanctioned by the central government and also declared by the central government as a national project so once that happens then you know 90% of the funding comes from the center and the state has to only contribute 10% so you know things like this uh, do enhance uh, uh, the feasibility and you know the funding and the cash flow of the projects so in terms of risk i i see uh, and plus nowadays things have the mindset has changed uh, the governments also don't allow uh, litigation the government also doesn't bid out the projects until all the clearances are in place land acquisition is in place so earlier this used these all challenges used to be there where central and state government uh, funding issues used to be there uh, uh, so so those are the that is so any state where there is that the center and the state are uh, politically are not aligned can pose a bit of a challenge uh, unless the project is uh, if the project is partially funded by the center so that is one of the challenges uh, i would say and uh, other than that you know land acquisition and land clearance and all of these challenges are not as much as they used to be earlier now they are not as much some of the projects which are uh, geologically in unstable con- uh, states there maybe you know uh, geological risks could be a, uh, a risk uh, you know uh, geological surprises could be a risk so things like that yeah. so answer real estate sir that is uh, we think some you know different kind of demand some some have good demand some have bad demand so just want to ask you that the real estate our exposure is very limited uh, now we have only three projects uh, jaipur kota and uh, bandra so uh, uh, jaipur is already completed uh, 
Kota is also completed. Bandra is what we'll have to keep on waiting till the slum gets cleared. So I don't see much risk in in on that side. Okay, okay, perfect, perfect. Thank you so much, sir. I'm for answering all the questions. That has been lost. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nish Shah from Stellar AMC. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. So my question is regarding the arbitration award received from Tapovan. Like, where will the funds will be utilized? Will it be utilized for the working capital, or it, uh, or we can pay up some portion of that? If can uh, give some guidance on that. That amount has already been utilized in the reducing CC limit. Earlier our CC limit was 80 crores. Right now it's 40 crores. That amount is already set using working capital. Okay, so the funds will be utilized for the working capital, right? It's already utilized. It's already uh, uh, utilized. Yeah. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Ankur Agrawal from RC Wealth Solutions. Please go ahead. Sir, as you are saying that the 25 crore that you have to pay for the next quarter, which you have to pay for the next quarter, which you have to pay for the next quarter. So that means that 25 crore is the bottom line if you have to pay for the next quarter. Yes, yes. Okay. And the other income is the 9 crore and the 19 crore. There is also 10 crore of interest income for arbitration. Yes. Yes. So the other amount of arbitration is booked in the sale? Because it's supply. It's booked in the sale. It's booked in the sale. It's booked in the sale. Okay. So the other amount of arbitration is booked in the bottom line because it's booked in the first place? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Thank you. 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 Forty-five. इसका तो forty-five crore से bottom line आपकी increase हुई है इस quarter में. Almost. पूरा amount नहीं कह सकते लेकिन almost. तो that means कि you are in loss for this quarter अगर वो forty-five crore नहीं आता तो. Loss नहीं है कि जो हमने September में जो unbill revenue book किया था because of Rajasthan project वो हमने इस बार book नहीं किया क्योंकि वो वो Rajasthan में billing हमने नहीं करी और surging stock हमने ऐसे ही रखा हुआ है because election के time पे वहाँ billing नहीं हो पाई. So, we did some billing in the short term quarter, but we didn't do that now. So, it has an impact. It's not a loss, it's an impact. No, your revenue benefit of 45 crores has got a revenue benefit, which didn't have any expenses. And your billing has been carried on. So, you got a benefit of 20 crores in the net, and your bottom line has got a profit of 12 crores. So, that means you got a loss of 8 crores in the short term. No, there is also an item like this, Jal Jeevan, which is a pipe from the side, which is not in the billing, in the last time. If they are in the billing, they will get a lot of billing. So, there is a small value addition. We have kept the pipe, and we have kept the joint, so we have not done the billing. So, there is a lot of stock built up in the side, in the last time. So, if they will build it, there will be no money in it. So, there will be no profit in the next three months. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. 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 अच्छा तो ये रेक्टिक रहता है मतलब अगर परचेज हो गई तो वो आप खर्चे में उसको वो कर लेते हो जिसकी वजह से प्रॉफिट और प्रॉफिट तो क्वार्टर रोमेटल के नाम रोमेटल के नाम से मार जाता ना वो तो रोमेटल का नाम से मार जाता है तो वैसे आप जैसा प्रॉफिट का परसेंटेज क्या लेके चल रहा हो आगे तक आप क्या आना चाहिए हमारे एक्चुअली जो वाटर बुक्स का मिक्स है ना वो जल जीवन मिशन प्रोजेक्ट्स के ऑर्डर हैं और वाटर सप्लाई इरिगेशन और हाइड्रोपावर के प्रोजेक्ट्स तो वाटर सप्लाई इरिगेशन हाइड्रोपावर में तो हमारी मनोपली है मतलब बहुत कम हाइड्रो मैकेनिकल इक्विपमेंट स्पेशली में हमारी मनोपली है तो वहाँ हमारे मार्जिन के करीब मार्जिन रहते हैं तो हर क्वार्टर तू क्वार्टर किस क्वार्टर में किससे रेवेन्यू मिक्स आया है ज़्यादा उसके पर डिपेंड करता है तो इसलिए क्वार्टर तू क्वार्टर मार्जिन्स और प्रॉफिटेबिलिटी देखने की जगह कंसोलिडेटेड बेसिस पे और एन्युअल बेसिस पे ईयर ऑन ईयर देखना ज़्यादा रेलेवेंट है the four digit uh, we are to, uh, planning on a crossing this time. So it will be a uh, significant growth from last year. 
नंबर वन नंबर टू सिंस ऑल द इश्यूज ऑल द पास्ट इश्यूज और ऑल्सो रिजल्ट सारे पुराने इश्यूज सारे सब खत्म हो गए तो प्रॉफिटेबिलिटी भी हमारी थ्री डिजिट में एक्सपेक्टेड है थैंक यू फॉर माई साइड थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू The next question is from the line of Kaushal Kedia from Walford. Please go ahead. Sir, on the Plasia Plasia project, I just wanted to understand. You said that around 190 crores is is booked revenues, and 300 crores is what can be realized. So, out of the 190, how much is received? If my numbers are right, how much? No, 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 no. Let me explain you. Out of yes. 313 crores is total consideration of sold units. Okay. Out of out of those, 280 crores has been realized. Okay, 280 has been realized. Yeah, but but the revenue booking has been done only for 140 crore. Okay. In in P&L account. Okay. Okay. Hmm. And how much money is received? 280 crore. 280 crores is received. So you're saying 100 crores is showing as advance. Yes. Yes. 140 crores advance. Yes. Hundred no no hundred and forty crores is showing in that one. Yeah yes. How hundred and forty hundred and forty plus one eighty or something? No no one forty we have already booked two eighty two eighty has been realized. Okay okay one forty minus two eighty minus one forty. Okay 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 that's it for me thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Jigar Bai Patel from J Invention. Please go ahead. गुड आफ्टरनून सर गुड आफ्टरनून सर व्हाट आर द रीजन ऑफ रिडक्शन ऑफ ओपीएम मार्जिन इन दिस क्वार्टर बिकॉज वी हैव बुक्ड एक्सपेंसेस ऑन दो आइटम फॉर विच बिलिंग हैज नॉट बीन डन ओके ओपीएम मार्जिन द बिलिंग विल बी डन इन मार्च क्वार्टर और से जून क्वार्टर Okay, so that will be uh, in, uh, increase in the future quarter. Correct, correct. Okay, that will be adjusted in the future quarter. Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, if you wish to ask a question, you may please press star and one. We have the next question from the line of Jitesh Jain, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Uh, congratulations to the home management. Uh, this is, I believe, the highest ever uh, turnover for the company, and we as shareholders very much look forward to see about thousand, thousand two hundred crores turnover very soon. Okay, uh, I would like to know about this. Uh, the latest on the Bilbara toll arbitration. I believe the commercial court uh, recently gave a judgment in our favor. So, now what's the way ahead for this? The PWD might go to High Court or Supreme Court, challenging the Commercial Court order. They, they, they're still prerogative, and they can do that. Okay. So this can basically take another six months to twelve months to conclude. Yeah, we can say that. How how judicial uh, things go ahead, it all depends on the High Court and Supreme Court. Okay. And uh, my next question is again on the new order inflows. I mean, like last for the last one one and a half years, I don't think we have bagged any significant order. So, are we like I mean, are there some big order in the pipeline, like where there L one or something like that? No, we are not uh, L one. We have bid for a few projects, uh, but we are not L one as yet. Uh, now, we are not. We are we are in the process of bidding. Uh, no significant order has been added uh, as yet, but. As I said, that you know, election year in the states and election period in the center also just close down the okay. process. Okay. So there are. So I think next, within the next six months or so, we could see some uh, positive news over there. Correct. Correct. Absolutely. Okay. That's it for my side. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Kaushal Kedia from Walford. Please go ahead. Uh, so. Uh, In our in our in our uh, conversation in in, in December on the 20th December, which we had done through the IR team, uh, you had mentioned that the Bandra project will take about two to three years, and you had no visibility then. So on when the issue will be resolved. So what has changed since then? 
Uh, that is making you believe that the, the slum rehabilitation can will take another six to seven months, hopefully. No, slum rehabilitation will not take six to seven months. I said six to twelve months. Uh, what has changed is that earlier we were thinking of you know doing a bringing in a third party uh, as the as a partner in that project. Now that strategy has changed. Now DB Realty situation uh, has uh, improved significantly. Their fundraising plans, etc., have all gone through. So the idea is that now, in principle, decision has been taken that we will uh, clean the slum ourselves. I mean, uh, we as in DB and us, uh, with our uh, no financial involvement, of course, uh, DB being the lead partner in that, uh, DB will invest money and will. Uh, will uh, be responsible for clearing the slum. And once the slum is cleared is when we will take uh, the, the project ahead, whether develop it, whether we will decide to develop it ourselves or we'll bring in a third partner. So so that is that is the change that has happened since last time. Okay, and we are a 15% partner in this project, right? The eventual uh, beneficial interest in the saleable FSI is about 15%. Eventual, once the complete project is completed, when the project FSI is frozen, our beneficial interest in that project. And what is going to investment in this project? 22. And which year did we invest this in? Our net, our net uh, investment uh, after the premium that uh, DB had paid us to uh, enter into the partnership, our net investment, uh, net effective investment is today stands about 20, 25 crores. And this was done about 10 years ago. 2006. 2006? That is 18 years. No, no, not six. Uh, it was done over a period of six to 10. 2006 okay. to 2010. So the last investment was done around 2000, uh, I would say 10, 11. So, so but, the, but that is 20, 20 crores. Around 20 to 24. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Janesh Shah, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Yeah, so again, my question is related to Palace. As I understood based on the discussion, the 140 crore we have advances, and that is yet to be booked in uh, next coming quarters. And since we have now project is completed, OC is done. Why we are not pushing our customer to go into the agreement so that this revenue can be realized in next quarter? We are pushing our customers, but uh, some some customers are residing out of Delhi, out of Jaipur, some residing in abroad. So th this is just taking time. But this is a significant amount. If this 140 crore which comes as a revenue and we already done 100% uh, expenditure on this project. So this is mostly conceived, uh, conceived and will add to our bottom line, right? Yes, yes. So we should push hard to the customer and we should get into the sell deed agreement so this revenue could, can be immediately realized. That will improve our cash flow as well as increase our capability to bid for more projects. Is my understanding is right? Yeah, that process is already on. Uh, we are uh, our customers regularly. So this Palacia project is also 8 to 10 years old project now and I hardly see any developer uh, which will take time of 8 to 10 years to complete this kind of 500 to 600 crore project. In fact, we have done all our expenditure investment on this project way back and 80-90% work was finished by 2019 or 20 before COVID. And then we struggled to get OC for one or two years now the OC is received, so it is very important for OM Infra to do the realization as a part of our books for this 140 crore, and we should push hard to sell the balance unit of this Palacia because that will take this company to the new orbit itself because our cash flow will increase and our bidding capability on mega project will also increase significantly. No, it's true. We are pushing our customers and pushing sales team to do that. But uh, uh, things are going in their, in its own way. Uh, we cannot reduce the price uh, looking into the project and its uh, valuation we have done. So price reduction is not a, not a good idea. So we are selling that slowly and we will achieve the target as in because there, there is no leverage in the project and we are hopeful that by one or one and a half years it will be entirely sold. 
Yeah, and and uh, the, what is the uh, what is the per square feet cost of this project as of now? Nine thousand, approximately nine thousand. I think this is also the competitive price looking at the area where we have done this project, and the way the connectivity has increased between Delhi and Jaipur. Uh, I really surprised why we could not uh, why we could not complete the balance fifty or fifty five unit sales. I think we should push hard on our sales and marketing strategy on this project to expedite our revenue revenue recognition in this project. So that's a, that's a, my sincere suggestion on behalf of entire shareholder community. No, no, you are very right, and we are doing our best to do that, and we will succeed in that. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you may press star and one to ask a question. We have the next question from the line of Janesh from Nivesha. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, what I'd like to ask is, we said that we have a niche and uh, we almost win 95% of the projects in hydromechanical, so I wanted to ask what stocks are peers or other companies to participate in the same thing? Just trying to get on the competitive scenario on it. Sorry, I couldn't understand your question. You are saying? Uh, sir, as we hold almost monopoly in hydromechanical business, Ah, so okay. I wanted to ask what stops other companies or our competitors to enter into this niche business. I'll tell you, I'll tell you, this is a very niche area of EPC uh, because uh, for several reasons. One, because a lot of lives depend on this, on these equipments. Uh, 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 you know, one gate uh, damage, one one gate breaking down can lead to flooding of. Uh, hundreds of square kilometers of uh, uh, you know surrounding areas and loss of lives etc. As you have seen recently with all the floods that have happened in the uh, Uttarakhand and in the uh, in the northeastern states. So uh, gates are very very critical uh, part of the overall uh, project and therefore the entry barrier that that kind of creates the entry barriers uh, for new entrants to enter into this field. Now, for example, if an HPC is coming out with a 500 megawatt project in Himachal or in Uttarakhand or in any any of the part of the country, and that has 20 gates of 20 meter by 20 meter, then the pre-qualification criteria will ask uh, for the company should that the company should have done a similar gate of similar capacity, at least 10 gates in the last 10 years, uh, where they should have done the design, engineering, manufacturing, supply, erection, testing, commissioning of a similar project. So that creates the entry barriers. Now. The client cannot lower down the entry barriers because they are very; these are critical equipments. Um, therefore, uh, you know, uh, the, 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 unless you have done similar projects and that too in the last 10, 15 years uh, of similar kind nature, uh, it's not easy to qualify for such projects. Likewise, for dams also, uh, construction of a dam is not a uh, you know run of the mill. Like highways and roads are very very basic uh, form of EPC. Construction, anyway, building construction is also a very basic form of EPC. But uh, these are all specialized form of EPC, like nuclear power projects, hydropower projects, you know, dams. So this is what creates the entry barriers. So just in case for civil construction, there are many companies for hydromechanical. We see, we see, we are the only company. So in coming years, for five to ten years, as we see major and mega projects coming in, so we will be the only major player to contribute to that hydromechanical part. Is my understanding correct? Yeah, hydromechanical large projects is uh, there are very few players in this field. Or uh, for large projects. Okay, fine. And sir, uh, for the arbitration award which you have received, have you booked the revenue as other income? Which for that the other income is a lot more than the previous quarter. Am I correct on that? So part? some part of the uh, arbitration award of 46 crores has been booked as other income. Some part has been booked as uh, EPC income. Okay, got it. And sir, uh, any views on orders which we have started receiving on PSPs or lever linkage because given the opportunity size is so high. But the question is when these uh, things will come into bidding pipeline or anything. So can you give a part on it uh, on river linking and PSPs? 
lot of projects have been announced by both the central government and the state governments now when these projects will come up for bidding maybe a matter of time uh, maybe in the next 6 to 12 months uh, but certainly there is a lot of action you keep reading news about uh, prime minister announcing river interlinking projects in the states of uh, rajasthan and madhya pradesh and maharashtra uh, up etc so all those projects now the, the only problem is that these uh, after the announcements uh to to reach the stage of tendering it takes a long time uh could take few months when you are between 6 to 12 months or maybe even one or two years but the speed at which it used to happen maybe 10 years ago and at which it happens now has changed dramatically now uh, now the speed uh, once the announcements are made and by the time the bidding comes in uh, is only a matter of maybe 6 to 12 months so a lot of projects for for pump storage have also come up for, uh, are also expected to come up for bidding in the next 6 to 12 months and a lot of projects of river interlinking also expected to come up in the 6 to 12 months okay so we could see order inflows from fy25 and sir as we have a specialization in hydromechanical so any sort of specialization in psps or level linkage which om infra has over other peers or so psp or also has the three major components civil uh, hydromechanical and electromechanical and we are already specialized in two out of those three civil and hydromechanical so certainly depending on which project uh, we decide to bid for which package we will definitely have a, a strong hold uh, in bidding as well as in winning the projects okay fine got a clarity thank you so thank you so much thank you thank you ladies and gentlemen we will take that as the last question i would now like to hand the conference over to mr vikas kothari for closing comments over to you sir so uh, thank you very much uh, uh, for a good participation uh, on our call and uh, thank you for asking very very intelligent and uh, uh, positive and proactive questions Uh, i thank each and every one of you for having interest in our company uh, and i assure you that we uh, in my own career i've been part of this company for the last 25 years more than 25 years and in my own uh, career of last 25 years i have not seen such exciting times as i'm seeing now uh, thanks to our honorable prime minister's vision and mission of uh, building uh, power infrastructure in our country uh both from renewable as well as from uh, you know uh, other sources of uh, power generation uh so we are proud to be a power uh, you know uh, power consumption country with the heavily focus on heavy focus on renewable energy and hydro power pump storage projects are all part of the renewable energy so i'm quite positive on those fronts and at the same time you know the the humbling vision of uh, the prime minister to provide uh, har ghar jal uh, under the jal jeevan mission scheme uh, i am proud to inform all our value shareholders that we are working on some of the remote uh, locations like you know in, at the india pakistan border uh, providing water tap connections uh, to villages which have never seen which has which has seen roads coming to their households have seen power uh, electricity coming to their households but has still not seen uh, water tap connections coming to their households and we uh, i was just recently visiting our uh, one of our sites in uh, bikaner in remote uh, uh, india pakistan border areas beyond uh, you know uh, nokha khajwala these are the towns that we were working on and it was an extremely humbling experience for me to uh, to be welcomed by the villagers there uh, in order to thank me for provide for bringing water to their uh, household after 75 years of our independence so uh, not only are we uh, proud of what we are doing but you know we are also uh, adding to the uh, vision of the honorable prime minister so super exciting times uh, and super work being done by us uh, by your company uh, and uh, and thankful for you all to be part of our journey from here on thank you very much for participating thank you Ladies and gentlemen that concludes this conference thank you all for joining us you may now disconnect your line